What is up, everybody? Today, we are going to step into the world of front end development in CSS specifically. And I'm going to show you how to create this, these specific links right here with this really cool micro animation. It's based on a hover state where we're creating our own custom underline uh, based on this hover state. And I'll show you exactly how to do this. Uh, it's strictly HTML, CSS, no JavaScript, no libraries of any sort. And I thought it'd just be a fun way to just come up with something uh, and show you guys how to do this. And um, you could really, the possibilities are endless with uh, this technique here using pseudo elements of before and after. So as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Now, wait one moment, you might be interested in learning CSS in an interactive online platform. And if that's the case, definitely check out designcourse.com forward slash CSS for my upcoming interactive CSS course. You can simply enter your email and you'll be notified when that releases, which should be sometime later this year. All right, let's get back to it. All right, so the very first thing you'll do is go over the project structure here. And this is basically the same sort of just basic HTML, pure CSS template, no library setup that I usually use. And so we have an index.html here, which is with some boilerplate, which by the way, if you're using Visual Studio Code, you can just hit shift and one to get your explanation point, hit enter for an Emmet abbreviation. And that gets you basically to where I'm at, except I did also link the CSS file right there. Um, and then we also have a CSS folder and I'm using SAS for this. So I'm using the, uh, the live SAS compiler as well. And I'm currently watching it. So it compiles that down to a CSS file. And of course it's empty. Um, and our index.html is empty as well within the body tags at least. So let's go ahead and just create real quick markup here. So we're gonna put everything inside of a container and then also everything inside of a card. And we're gonna have three different cards. Then we're gonna have an H1. And by the way, I'm using Emmet for a quick way to write HTML. Um, I do have a tutorial that you can search on my channel to uh, find out about Emmet, of course. So it's about the underline, enter, there we go. And then also we're gonna have a paragraph with like lorem 15, I guess, uh, just, just 15 random words. And then also we'll have our magical link. So it's gonna look like any other link, except we're gonna have take the test here that's all our markup is for each card. And we're just gonna copy and paste that two more, or two more times. So we have a total of three. Awesome stuff. Now what we can also do is right click, open with live server. And this will show up right here. And we'll just refer back and forth to this. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to, in our SAS file, um, we're just gonna set a body element and I'm just gonna paste this in because it's really not the purpose of the tutorial. Sending the background here to a dark desaturated blue. Font family poppins, I already have that installed on my machine. Of course, you wanna import that from Google Fonts um, if, if this were a real project. Resetting margin zero, um, display grid here, place content center, height 100 view per height. All right, so the, these, two, these three lines allow us to take that container element and just center it vertically and uh, horizontally. Um, next up after that, we're gonna have our container. And our container is simply a margin of uh, four, zero on the top and bottom and 4EM on the left and right, just to get away from the edges. We have display flex to take those three cards and just that, that's a very quick way, the fastest way to put something in columns. And then a gap, which is the white space between them, one M unit. Um, outside of that, we're gonna have our card as well. And so our card is simply a background um, and this is just white. <laughs> I, I did have a different background color. You could just put in white for the value instead of this RGB function. Um, we also have margin bottom of two M units and padding of four M units just to get some white space there. All right, so now let's go ahead and actually work on our link itself. So um, we're gonna put in our A. And so this is gonna style everything, obviously, if we're using the A selector. And we're going to put in a specific color here. And it's just a blue color that matches the current background. So now if I were to save everything right here, you'll see what everything currently looks like. And that is the old one. Oh no, this is the new one. There we go. And I, yeah, quickly transformed it to this. Okay, so continuing on, I we're going to take the font size, just bump it up a little bit to 1.3 rem units. Text decoration. We're putting none because we're gonna have our own custom underline. We're also gonna put a margin top of one M units. We're gonna have a display of inline hyphen block. We are going to have a font weight of bold, a padding of 0.5 M units, and a margin left of negative 
0.5 mu just to offset that padding because it will push it over a little bit. All right, let's, let's see what this looks like here. So this is the current situation. All right, and now we're also going to add, and this is gonna be the first really pertinent part of this tutorial. Um, we're gonna add position relative. And whenever you're using these pseudo elements like before and after, and you're trying to do like custom graphics like we are, um, a real common pattern is on the parent, you put position relative, and then on the pseudo elements of before and after, you put position absolute. All right, so that means when you're absolutely positioning the pseudo elements, you want it to be in relation to I, or you want it to be, yeah, in relation to the, the parent element. Um, so that way when we push it down, like from top and bottom values, it's gonna be based on this link right here. Otherwise, it won't work well. We could probably experiment with that just so I could show you. Um, and then also we're, we're, all, we're gonna add another property. Usually I use a tool, if you go to Google and type CSS Clippy, uh, it's just a visual tool for the clip path property. And all this is, is just a rectangle. And all it's saying is we're gonna transform this link right here so that anything that falls outside of it based on our pseudo element of before and after, it won't be seen. I, and I'll show you that as well. So next up, we're gonna take uh, and before and after, all right? So we wanna style both of these with a few things first. Uh, position absolute on both. We'll also have content empty on both as well. So if we do control one, um, you'll see position relative on the parent. You see position absolute and content empty on the pseudo elements, which is a real common pattern for this sort of thing. Um, next up, we're gonna have border bottom of three pixels solid and that blue color. So we're just gonna take this and paste that right there. We're also gonna have border radius of one M units, bottom of 0.3 M units. And that bottom, by the way, is making that, that line show up underneath the actual type, which is what we want. And if we save this at this point, we should see, no, not yet. In a second, we'll see the underline. Uh, we haven't specified a width yet. And we are gonna have a transform element right here. Uh, we'll do that in a little bit. So then we're gonna take our and before, all right, and we're going to specify a width of one M unit. Now at this point, we should see it. There it is, all right? Okay. And then we're gonna have a uh, transform origin of left. Now the reason we're using that is because in a little bit we're gonna scale these things from uh, scale X and we don't want it to, the transform default origin of center because it'll, it'll scale it from the center. We want it to scale it from left, which means it'll go like this. All right, um, after that, we'll have our and after. And this one, I'm putting in a width of, I uh, sorry, a width of uh, percentage value, 82%. And I found that that worked well to keep it fluid. Um, and then we're gonna have left one M unit, and then a transform, which we're not gonna add yet. I just wanna, show what this is gonna look like here. This should look like a solid underline at this point. This is kind of like the default state. Um, so now what we'll do is go ahead and specify a transition property, which is gonna animate it when we do the hover states. So transform, that, that's the element we wanna actually, anim, actually animate, 0.5 seconds. Cubic Bezier, right there just to make the animation a little bit more interesting. All right, um, so now what we'll do is we're going to, on our before element, push it out of view. So what we'll do is specify transform. Or actually, I'm wrong. We gotta put that on the after element. We're always gonna have this one in view. Uh, so this is gonna be transform translate X. 110%, that gets it out of view. So if I save this, we're no longer gonna see that solid line. It's actually over here, and that's why if we come back over here and we get rid of the clip path, now we're gonna see it off. That's what that clip path property does. Makes it so you can't see anything outside of the balance of the actual element. All right, um, and now all we have to do is put in our two more rule sets, and that's gonna be uh, on the, the the hyperlink, the A element, we're gonna do and hover. What are we going to change? The before element. We're gonna say transform, translate, or no, let's do scale X. 
0 0.3. So we're kind of uh, scaling it down a little bit. And then also, let's just copy that. And after, we're going to do a translate x of 0. All right, let's save it and give it a shot. Look at that. See if I could do this at all. There we go. Very, very fun, cool stuff for custom links. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. Now with this te technique of using before and after pseudo elements, you can really create a lot of really cool I uh, unique ideas uh, based on animate hover states and you know and anything else in CSS really you can apply this to any element and you can add extra graphics uh, interactive or not all right so hopefully you enjoyed that if you did make sure to subscribe or leave a comment leave a like etc etc check out designcourse.com all that good stuff I'll stop spamming you now and see you later goodbye <laughs>